be there in a hurry. Do you spit or swallow? Nigel asked me last night. I asked him truthfully. I'm not sure. I've never done it before. What would you recommend? <laughs> Baby, there ain't no mountain high enough. Ain't no mountain low enough. Ain't no... Where was I? Since it's your first time, he said, you might as well enjoy it. Roll it slowly around in your mouth to really get the taste of it. Explore the texture of it with your tongue. Take it to the back of your throat. Gargle. He looked me straight in the eyes. Then swallow. You see, that's exactly why I went to wine club. To learn. <laughs> Nigel, our tutor, he advised us to always spit. No point getting so pissed that you can't identify the different bouquets. That would rather defeat the object. Bit of a waste, though, spitting. It takes a while to get used to, too. The first time I did it, I dribbled Merlot all down my chin. I looked like a bleeding vampire on a night out, whacking back pints of AB negative. <laughs> I soon got the hang of it, though. And before long, I could fire a thin stream of Semillon through the gap in my front teeth, straight into the spittoon. That's what you spit out into. See? You've learnt something already. <laughs> I decided to learn about what because so many men assume that they have superior knowledge without even bothering to ask. They assume that us girls are happy slurping anything cold and wet with Chardonnay on the label. I mean, half the time they're not wrong. <laughs> not that I'm going to tell them that. But I at least wanted to appear to have some sort of refinement. So the next time some bloke asks me to sniff his Pinot Grigio, I'll know what to expect. <laughs> I wasn't banking on Nigel taking quite so much interest in me though honestly he couldn't take his eyes off me your cheeks blush like Loire Valley Rosé he whispered to me during one of our blind tastings he showed me how to swirl the wine around to see if it clings to the side of the glass that's how you can tell it's got legs he explained but he was too busy peering at my legs I'm going to wear a longer skirt next week I mean, just what is it with men and wine? They seem to really enjoy overcomplicating things. I mean, it's grape juice, right? It comes out of the ground and back in it via your bladder. And more often than not, it tastes just as good, if not better, after making that particular journey. But, oh no, let's pretend that you have to sniff it, hold it up to the light with your eyes narrowed for at least a couple of minutes before knocking it back. All I'm saying is it's a snob's paradise. All this, you can't mix that with this crap. If I want to guzzle a bottle of Blue Nun whilst polishing off a pot of Nutella, I'll do so, thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't go telling anyone, but uh, Nigel asked me the other day if I'd care to join him on a wine tasting trip to France. He looked me up and down, all excited, and said he wanted to explore my Dordogne area. <laughs> Cheeky sod, he ain't exploring my Dordogne area. And he reckons there's still places in France that tread grapes the old traditional way with their bare feet. I mean, I know wine and cheese go together, but I draw the line at wine, cheese and corn plasters. <laughs> anyway. I finished the six weeks introductory course and I can now tell the difference between a Chablis and a Chardonnay. Actually, Chablis is Chardonnay. Just testing. <laughs> and another thing. The next time a bloke sits next to me at a dinner table, sips his Rioja, stares into the distance all glazed eyes and tells me he's getting licorice, old leather saddlebags and beeswax, then asks me what I'm going to get. I'm going to spit. Bottoms up. <laughs>